Welcome to Team Fortress TV. This is admirable. Some people say admirable. We got Commander X. Some people say Superstar. And we got Ducky here to do battle with John. He's also in the mumble, but not casting. Streamer battle. <laughs> We're going to watch ETF 2L Season 16, powered by TT Esports. It's a Premiership qualifier. Daughter versus Lethal Weapon. It's Sweden versus Russia. Commander X! Are you hyped, buddy? No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hype. Yeah, yeah. Are you hype? You, you sound pretty excited. Maybe oh, too excited. No. Uh, I was so excited earlier, I thought I'd just slash my face open whilst I turned in the shave. <laughs> but uh, I've left myself with a big Glasgow smile right there. Nice. But, does, does your uh, chin now match your forehead? Is it like perfect <laughs> symmetry? I've got two mugs. That's what it looks like. But I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've just joined the SDV here. And I am yet to see anyone on the server, but it says... Please wait for broadcast to start, so they must have changed maps. The setting is Badlands, three maps tonight, potentially. Gullywash, Badlands, and a Granary Decider. And it's really weird, because everybody in this first round of the qualifiers has all picked Gullywash and Badlands to start with. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're the two most common maps. Europe's home maps, everyone's, the ones that everyone feels most comfortable with. Both kind of new teams, you know. A lot of the players have played with each other before, but not quite in this exact setup. So, it's for maps everyone knows best, so it'll be easier for them to adjust and play their best on. Yeah, really, all these six teams are new. Like, even Deserto and Phoenix might be, you know, existing from last season, but pretty much a, a new rosters right there. Uh, we saw a game last night, uh, myself and Ryushi and John presented a well, pretty one-sided showing from Mela Mool against Team Deserto. You can catch the VODs from that on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Team Fortress TV. Head over to teamfortress.tv and you can be kept up to date on the schedule of our cast for this season and many other events like ESEA Land just passed this weekend. If you missed that, you missed some uh, sensational TF2 with a double best of three being settled on the sixth map. Did you catch that, Commander X? It was crazy. I, yeah, I set up soup. I was at work when it was on. <clears throat> Pardon me, when it was on live, but I watched it all on the VOD, set up to 6am, because it's the world's longest VOD. But it was worth it, it was amazing, excellent TF2. Not sure if we'll quite see the same standard today, but it should still be entertaining, it should be close. We've got the European Seagull here, Zebasa, you know. He uh, is back on the rumour roll here, like at the start of the season when this daughter roster came together, Zebo was intending to play Pocket, and they were going to play uh, Knutsen on Rome, but uh, after a while playing that, I think Zebo got a little bit frustrated, you know, being shackled as the pocket he wanted, the, the freedom that he once had in TCM when he was the rumor. But back then, he didn't have the gunboats, so this is going to be uh, him catching up, maybe watching a few jukebox demos, who knows? I think the demos he needs to watch our seagulls demos. Oh, to, yeah. If he wants to True. learn how to roam. Jukebox, uh, still pretty good. Maybe uh, slightly less direct than Seagull. Seagull, Seagull was. Uh, I know we're talking about a totally different game, but I love the. <laughs> we definitely changed it up, man. He had a couple of different gears there, no pun intended. Sometimes he was just like spawning and going straight in every time and seeing if he got lucky, and then he was able to switch it up for the more sneaky plays as well. It was impressive. People should watch that. But uh, we do see Russians joining the server as well. I guess we should do a roster rundown as these are essentially new teams. Commander X, I'll let you pick a side. Um, I want to go with the Russians then. Uh, I've got White Glower Medic. Uh, always been the best medic in Russia. Played for a long time. Always been towards the top of the scene. Great medic. Uh, recently released a frag movie uh, of his team last season. Crits Machine. Crits Machine, yeah. Entertaining. Um, on Pocket, they've got Forsaken, who's also the main caller. Trying to uh, teach the Russians a lot more of a bite style of play rather than the standard. Hey, look. We're players, let's go shoot things. Um, GDK on the demo man, most famous demo in Russia. Big player. Uh, they've got Yangpai and MSH on Scout, which I guess is where the biggest questions are in a lot of ways. Uh, MSH quite widely, or not widely regarded at all, really. Uh, I think the best way to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the most politically correct. Don't want to make any more enemies. Um... Yang Pai on the other scout. Um, I think he's played. He's played in a lot of like kind of Div Two, Div One Russian teams. But from what I've seen of him, he's really comfortable at this level. He doesn't seem out of place at all. And to cap off the roster, they have a legendary Shadow Burn on Roma, possibly yeah. the greatest player in the world. Maybe not. 
He seems to have some uh, reputation with him. He's even got jumps named after him, apparently. In, <laughs> the Ru- side in Russia, jumps. at least. Oh, yeah, the sideburn jumps. Uh, I'll, I'll run you through that daughter roster. This is an all Swedish roster. Wasta, sorry, I'm Jonathan Ross. Put together by Zebesai after the sort of uh, demise of play or ban, uh, aka Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory last season. I think he'd already decided to put some sort of all sweet team together. You got him playing rumor as mentioned. Former soldier of the season. He's going to be joined by Knutson. He's sort of the wild card here. He used to play TF2 like four seasons ago, which is pretty good. Around the Div 1 level. Not sure if he ever actually. Low prem, wasn't it? Low quarantine. Prem, yeah. Oh, yeah, quarantine. And then uh, he got bored of TF2 or whatever, and he spent a long time playing Tribes Ascend. He was one of the best snipers there, which uh, is quite impressive considering the speed those kids are going at. And. Now he is back playing here. He actually shares, he's a roommate, a flatmate of Beavern, who is the scout partner of Walters you see here before you. Of course, Beavern and Walters very versed in the Premiership. And uh, I've been giving Walters a lot of abuse in the preseason, saying, you know, that he's uh, been off form since he's left Epsilon. and hasn't really had the challenge or the suitable team. Let's see if he can step his game up today. we got Riv, of course, another legend of the game, playing Demo Man here. He's back after a season hiatus. And on the heel beams, it's two nuts, two max, two nasty. He, your medic of the season. Uh, he is going to be uh, pocketed by Knutson, who's just back here. So we might see some sort of, you know, a lack of chemistry there, if you know what I mean, until later in the season. You know, I'm just throwing out all these question marks over daughter because their results in practice have been very mixed. Like, they didn't even submit any screenshots to the admins because they said, you know, we only treat practice as practice. We don't go for the win. And the admins saw fit to give them a placer anyway, which I think was the right move, Commander X. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did catch, like, the last two minutes or something as of their last warm-up map against Made in Germany, and they did win that one on Gullywash. Uh, as I think we are going live, Admirable, so take it away. Beautiful. If you have just joined us, it's Team Force TV with Admirable Commander X and Ducky here for ETFTL Season 17, powered by TT Esports Premiership Qualifier. It's Daughter versus Lethal Weapon. We're going to the first middle here on Badlands, map one. And I am watching the perspective of Beaver and his Wallers as they make an aggressive push across the point here, offering protection for Rib to just move forward there and try and do as much damage as they can to the Russians, trying to out aggress the Russian Shadowburn gets launched. Skyward stunned in the air and cleaned up by scatter shots. And even though it is a four, oh, a man down, an extra man down here for uh, Daughter. I was just about to say it was an even fight, but the position was just much stronger there from Daughter. There's nuts and eats a pipe from GDK and a rocket from Forsaken at the same time. Gets into the spawn queue. Two yachts doesn't even have his charge yet. Can't save himself. Can't save anybody. And the Russians take it with a second push. Yeah, as actually a soldier comes in and hits a white glow, chase him into valley, there's no one to protect white glow. Oh, white glow serves both rockets, both rockets away. Beautiful from white glow, keeps his uber uh, as uh, Dota, nearly called him Brodovet. Uh, I was able to hold on to mid eventually there, but I can expect a push from the Russian soon. And we're going straight from valley here. Uh, no respite for Dota. There's a little bit of resistance, they're all set up on train. White Glow, White Glow drops of a trap, didn't see where that trap was. And this pendulum swings back already in this exciting opening to the game. They're still going to try and make a play since they're pretty committed. But the frags are all just falling pretty comfortably for Dota. And that's going to be an uber advantage, an easy spire. And we're going to have an uber advantage push on last. That's uh, hilarious in a sense, you know, that White Glow makes these amazing escapes then dies to like uh, elementary sticky trap there on the slope just wasn't paying attention wasn't looking to see there was sticks on the door rib dead got that drop and uh, now it is daughter pushing their way into the top lobby here trying to position themselves and scope out what the russian defense is there's a pyro and a heavy they can surely hear that heavy spinning up but how will they choose to approach this is it going to bring in one scout and a demo man scout is trying to Dealing with that pyro, it's Messiah MSH with the reflex and totally shuts it down. Eventually does go down. Shadburn also down as well, so that's two frags from the Uber. And now they're trying to play the point. They forced the heavy onto the floor. And now they can begin to try and attack him from multiple angles, but the coordination isn't that good. Oh, Waller's in onto White Glow. That's gonna be key here. No heals anymore for this heavy. They can slowly chip away at his health, but it's only Waller's in there. He's making a, a go of it though, gets a frag onto for sake before he finally goes down to the heavy, the rest of uh, Daughter backed out to build Uber and maintain their Uber advantage thereafter. Walter's got that pick on the white though. 
Uh, yeah, uh, interesting there. It looked like it was uh, going going to go well for Dota there, but the Pyro really slowed him down a lot. But two nuts managing to survive after all the dust settles. And Get interesting. MSH. Yeah. Where's MSH? Oh, yeah, he's on spy. Zebatai is on a spy of his own. I don't think MSH is going to be positioned to do anything as two nuts and his pocket are still already walking through main. Walters goes down early, but a backstab on the heavy now. That's going to free up a lot of damage. Soldier Gap trying to bait everyone to the point. Uh, spy on the demo man now, and it looks like the Russians are going to hold again as GDK drops a whole pile of frag. And two nuts is going to be left as the last <laughs> man standing as he falls, runs all the way back to meet up with the respawning Walters on Sniper. Yeah, two nuts giving MSH a little flash there, and uh, conf Rib found himself <laughs> confused, stuck in a corner, and uh, I just saw GDK reading pipes down on his head. But double spy action there, Zebatai didn't even see him, man. I was all about the MSH spy. Let's Leaf see what they want to go. They want to go. Yeah. Uh, for, actually, no, they changed their mind. Forsaken and White Glow walked all the way over, out to balcony, then just changed their mind. I think they must have. Figured out they were at an uber disadvantage with two nuts surviving and didn't want to risk it. Uh, but it's not much, it's only 20%. I'm not sure if they can make a play in that time. Uh, they're getting in good position here to be able to push on the dot. Pun intended, <laughs> daughter. Good one. But they, uh, <laughs> put that one down in your notebook. <laughs> but they're, uh, now they're taking their time. They need to uber early here. There's five stickies up top. Oh, two nuts does just pop for the depth. And they were able to bring the scout and MSH, unable to have them contained in the door this time. Pyro goes down and scouts straight onto the point. Smart play there by Beaver and drawing everybody down. But the Ubers are still in effect here. The scope of Walters is watching straight down main there. There is a heavy weapons guy, but he's unable to charge a shot up now. That's on White Glow. Out. Bottom left. He got a couple of rockets at him, but White Glow wiggles away. And now both players are going to be cleaned up. And surely this is going to cue Leaf a weapon to push here. Shadowburn staying on last. Um, Forsaken already on the Spire, the rest of his team are joining him. Walter's staying on the Sniper class. As Zebasai comes in for a big block, Rib joins him and that's two good frags now for Dota. They should be able to hold on to this here. MSH is still fighting up the Spire, gonna try and sneak that cap, but he's gonna have to do well to avoid all the spam here. Not a lot of support, just tries to hide in the corner, but Zebasai sees him, takes him down, and that's three down and a 30% advantage for two nuts. They may even just try and, uh poke a little bit here, draw people down into the, the sniper's line of sight. Shadowburn is uh, dicing with death there, but now Walters pushes up, he's got line of sight onto the heavy, onto the medic, but can't land a fatal headshot. He isn't even been really pressured too much there from the barrels now. We see Forsaken drop down and make sure that he's moved. Walters will rotate to the right hand side, probably going to snipe from top here and see if he can get lucky, but at the last daughter Uber, we saw them lose a lot of players on the flank. Hopefully they can just go in and and get a pick here, get out for the repush, but oh, Walter just tries to go for the hero sniper play, rolls the dice, but Forsaken, he's all over him, he's been shut down now. They'll probably have to wait until Walters gets back in the game. Uh, yeah, they're just trying to peek, uh, put a little spam on there, bottom right with a double soldiers, and they're actually going to Uber out top here, they pop really early out top, the Ubers are trading in top lobby, Forsaken's trying to find some damage, Rib's too far away, White Glow's going to fall out to last, Forsaken is still behind, Trying to fight, but too much health from the Dota players, and he's going to go down. Uh, do you think we're going to push with this one? Now, two man advantage. MSH going down as well. Rib spamming in stickies remain. There's still not heavy. Nutson comes out up top onto the heavy now. They're probing. Soldier going for the point. The heavy's been baited to the floor. White Goat Low's exposed up top. They've got two frags, but they've all been baited to the point. And all in now, just DDK. GDK gets one. GDK sticking up the point. He gets two. And Rib just walks straight forward with his buff, knows GDK doesn't have enough loaded, and Dota will eventually cap the first round out on the third time of asking. Oh, if GDK had just made it onto the point for half a second, there are two spawns coming in, but will be uh, our top seed here taking the first round on the first map. GDK rolling out house. He's going to come straight out the door here and try and contest Rib. He was very aggressive in the last middle with a little scout support. Zebasai is fast up onto the train here, but finds nobody as the Russians have decided to roll out through Shithouse. And uh, Nutson has taken a lot of damage here, but it's actually two Nuts who goes down first. Walters joins him as well. The Russians have just cleaned up here on the red train. Zebasai didn't really... Oh, he did manage to get a white glow, actually. I was going to say he didn't get much done, but did manage to see a face with a little medic pick there as they set the time limit. <laughs> that would be wise. Yeah, uh, they gave Dota all the position there, but it was just baiting them forward as they all came up. Uh, the shit house, and they all jumped. Great synchronized jump from the soldiers. So much damage. Everyone followed up on it, and all the Swedish players just fell. 
Here's our boy Zebo running the spy again and uh, working his way onto the balcony. I feel like um, he may have been heard there by Shadowburn. He, he cloaked sort of as he was at the top of the stairs. They might be looking for a spy. Kritzkrieg as well yeah. here for White Glow. <gasps> Zebo side's really far behind in the house as well. I imagine this is going to be the GDK show now then. Uh, they're walking up balcony, taking their time. There's not actually much of an advantage. Two nuts building particularly well. And it's all going to be up to two nuts' trigger finger as Zebosai now just backspawns. Uh, Has he checked it though? Does he know? Does he know that it's crits? Did he check the medic's medigun? I don't. With I don't know. They're coming in. So I'll just jumping in. They're crits in the point. Shadowbone goes down, but the pop is popped. Bubra's popped. Uh, nuts is going to try and chase out. Sky! Get GDK. MSH stealing the show. Looks really good for the Dota there, but they all just pushed away from a point too early, and MSH is, MSH is able to sneak in. Yeah, that's the sort of um, chemistry thing, just knowing that you're the last guy that should cover the point or whatever. The, the fact they pushed out with four was maybe a, a little overzealous. They just got punished. Anyway, onto another middle. No crits in sight. But uh, little play here from Zebo and Walters combining. Zebo jumps high as Walters storms the shit. He picks up two, three frags there. Two actually, <laughs> two nuts goes down to the bomb though, Shadowburn finds Beaverin as well. Now White Glow and Forsaken are up against Nutson who has no heals. He's got to go in deep for a bomb here, lands one rocket, switches to the shotty but can't kill him. 50 HP there on White Glow, he will live to fight another day. Yeah, great work from the Dota flank early on and then the Russian flank did even better. And White Glow again, looking really slippery in this game, looking really difficult to kill. That's what, the second or third time? He's just completely duped. People coming in on him survived. And now we're going to see the Uber in the hands of Lethal Weapon. And do I see a Pyro? I see a Pyro on Balcony. That's got to be Zebosai. Um, oh, Walters gets shut down there in the valley. He was just going in to see if he could make any sort of lucky pick or backcap play. But the Russians decided to roll out all the way from valley. And uh, he got caught there. Zebo as well will go down to Stickies. And... Um, that's going to be a, a tough spawn here. The forces, the Ubers come in though during that. Yeah, one. they popped free main. I'm not sure if they thought they could catch Dota out falling back off that balcony, but they weren't able to. And now Two Nuts is surely going to push. Zebosai's back up now. Uh, looks like Nuts wants to go through that top lobby. There are stickies there that they're going to have to pop early. They are. They do pop. Going out to balcony, but White Glow is really far back. It's really difficult for Nuts to get any real damage or progress. Shadowburn's going last. Shadowburn's going last. White Glow's two. going. With GDK as well, uh, but the combo's flanks, White Glow, hit down he goes, and the Russians could just get completely sandwiched. Still Don't Forsaken, bottom right. GDK the top left as well. Forsaken uh, trades GDK's with the demo. Yep, uh, uh, Sweden come out uh, the top on both fights <laughs> there. Uh, really messy push, but Dota managed to pull it off just about. Shadowburn going fast into the balcony, into Spire there. It's just going to jump straight back out as well, using all his health. And Dota will recap that and maintain a 20% advantage going towards middle. MSH is going to snipe here from Choke. Pops off two shots but can't find his target. He's going to have to back off here. And this is uh, a conundrum for Dota. How do they want to push in here against the sniper? How much respect are they going to show the MSH scope? And it looks like quite a lot. They probed into the house there to see if they could get any easy frags. Beaver finds himself low. They're now all healing up, looking for their buffs. They seem to want to push uh, on the button. Here they come. Uber is popped through the stickies, but Zemasai, even with the flash, takes about 200 damage in mid-air there, combined from the Russians. Nuts and gone down. GDK. Zemasai super weak. Wow, GDK just launched forward really aggressively in their Ubersai count two nuts. And all the aggression is coming forwards. Then there is a soldier intercepting and Beaven and Zebosai combining. Here come the reinforcements from Lethal Weapons. Zebosai will slink out into house. He's still behind. But they know it. Shadowburn's keeping an eye on it. He jumps now. He skip jumps. One rocket on White Glow. White Glow surfs away. 20 HP. White Glow refuses to go down as a back cap is initiated. Walter's going to go for the medic pick, I think. But there's way too much pressure and Walter's is caught out behind here. But he is buying a little bit of time. Wallers and Zebo dead again, but on different spawn times. Wallers won't be up for another 15 seconds. Uh, but Zebo should be here to try and help defend this Spire White Glow with a 30% advantage as it stands. But uh, you can tell the Russians aren't confident to push until they have Uber. They're trying to taking draw somebody out of position. Yeah. and Yeah, taking a lot of spam on both sides, I think. Yeah, they were just, oh, oh, no one was particularly weak, but just everyone was on like three quarters health. Shadowburn going in really far. Um, 
just not really doing anything, just trying to distract them. But he was going to be popped in. Rib will be caught out. Is there? He's flanked two nuts. Two nuts is trapped. Uh, Scouts killed Shadowburn, but two nuts has been forced forward straight into Lethal Weapon's hands. <laughs> White Glow dodges an air shot. Uh, White Glow still dancing around the spine. But the scout's doing good cleanup work here. GDK needs a good pill to save himself from Walters. Walters only on 15 HP. Let's see whether the scout on Spire is. Can't hit any pistols on the 1 HP Walters. Down he goes. <laughs> Gives up on pistols, swaps the scatter gun. White Glow survives once again, and the Russians gain Spire. Yeah, there's some poor decision making going on there from the uh, Swedish combo. Like, First off, they didn't realise they were at uber disadvantage, or at least wanted to try and weather that storm. But then, as soon as Shadowburn went behind, like, I think the obvious choice was just to back off and kill him, and then try and defend Spire rather than fight on two fronts like that. Yeah. But they didn't. They didn't react quick enough. Maybe if Zebo was in the combo, that call would have come in quicker. But as I understand it, uh, it's two nuts. Two nuts. Yeah, calling. two nuts is calling. Yeah. I imagine. Like, I think Zebosai, um obviously gives a lot of supporting calls from a flank, but he he. He says maybe he could main call, but I think he just really doesn't like the idea of it. Doesn't like the idea. Both soldiers going top left now against a pyro, and that's going to be interesting. The Uber has popped, two nuts on 90%. Uh, not a whole lot of frags. Zebosai will be the first to fall. Walters hits a sniper shot. There's time on the point, though. So much time on the point. The Uber's pop. White Glow is definitely trapped in this time. Just Shadowburn and GDK once again. The even as heavy on the point. Um, GDK is going to go down. Don't know where Shadowburn is. He's on balcony. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to set up a last play with that heavy there. I imagine he's just going to try and buy time. Meets a soldier. Kills him and will equalize away on 13 HP. As the Spire cap has started for the Swedes. Yeah, just the fact that Walters was able to spot out Shadowburn would have given them a lot of confidence to push there with only uh, one up and the rest spawning. They at least knew where he was and they were able to uh, force him back there. Although Knutsen, Knutsen did lay down his life for it. Now we're back to a situation where we've seen uh, Daughter Feel already trying to push into these middles against the Russians. They've had uh, mixed success, so it'll be interesting to see what they do here. Looks like they're going to sit back and build up those Ubers as we go into a little stalemate. Nobody wants to push in dry here or make any big plays. Wallers is playing solo at uh, Resup. Actually, there's Zebesai now to add a little firepower, but Beaver was playing around here on the jump pad. They're expecting jumpers. They're expecting the Russians uh, perhaps to initiate here, and I suppose that would be the sort of etiquette. But Walters goes oh. down, that'll definitely in induce the push, I think, Commander X. Skip jump, yep, Shadowburn going in deep, just going to try and jump behind again. He's awfully weak, he will get picked off as the Ubers are... Well, I'd say the Ubers are traded, but Two Nuts and Nut Knutson able to hold for a long time. Soldiers for seconds jump behind to Spire. Uh, back cap going on now, Dota are caught in two mines, looks like they're committing to middle. They're standing on that train trying to fight it. But the cap is still going down. Forsaken's taken down behind now. Surely they're going to get back up and choke. As the Russians try and stop them coming through. But Rib arrives and just deals out all the damage. And surely they're going to have to give up middle now. Oh, Shadowburn's in! Oh, oh. 2k! Shadowburn lands an aerial rocket there but from a they fast fight roll this. They want to fight this, but the position's not good. A uh, couple of weak players. Uh, GTK cleaning up everyone, though. Just a soldier left on point. GDK will take that one as well. GDK on fire early on in this. He's going to spawn camp. Will anyone fall for it? Three players are going to spawn. He's got the stickies on him. Uh, Zebosai's already on pyro. Knows he's there. GDK is just going to fall out. Maintain his life. Full uber advantage here. Dota needs some kind of pop to help them keep last. That was one of those like uh, uh, there. weird situations, you know, where the entire team's dead. You get this like weird environment cam. They probably saw GDK jumping to spawn. They're, like, they were straight there with the pyro. Yeah, the, uh, the Russians hold. are trying to push in here yeah. from uh, trash. They actually get forced, but Rib goes down. No stickies to defend last right now. They're gonna have to commit bodies to the point if they want to hold on here. As the Russians pour in bottom right, uh, Shadowburn with 300 onto the point, laying down <laughs> serious damage. GDK is there to just finish off. It looks like Shadowburn can do it himself. Yang Pai runs in to steal a little credit for that cap, though. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Russians off to a great start here. GDK in particular looking really impressive. Uh, Shadowburn with the clutch play on middle now. Basically won him that round. And we're going back into another middle here. Tell me what you see, Ads. It's a Valley rollout here from the Swedes. Both scouts coming from Valley. Uh, not really paying much attention to <gasps> their own train. And somebody just caught a pipe there. I think it was nuts and There's Zebesite on the MSH. That's not a bad trade. Scout for Soldier for Romer on this middle. Two nuts surfing high there, but 
There's not many red bodies in front of him. He needs people to move forward and take the pressure of him. White Glow goes down. Two knots does manage to survive. Gets the kit and can now heal his scouts for the cleanup. Shadowburn and Yang Pai have something to say about it. Yang Pai straight into the spawn queue. Shadowburn last man alive. He's going to get rushed by Beaver, who eventually finishes him off there on 50. But Shadowburn with some wild rockets there. Panicked by that scout in his face. <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty comical opening where both teams run each other's shithouse. GDK spams one pipe from their shithouse back over to his own shithouse. Air shots Knutson as he tries to jump up onto the bridge. Um, and then it looked like the Russians just got pinned really far back, tried to explode out of that corner to make himself some space. But a good flank from Walters really opened up that mid for the cleanup. MSH was sniper there on balcony, but nobody came in through choke, so he didn't have a shot. I don't think they even know there is a sniper. There's Zebese. Uh, trying to probe out the enemy defense, finds Forsaken in lobby who does shut him down. Zebo has an opportunity to respawn here as off class. We've seen him play Spy, we've seen him play Sniper. What will it be? Soldier! Oh, why do you <laughs> bore me, Sebastian? <laughs> so many options, keeps it cookie cutter, and it's going to be equal Ubers on last here. Pyro and Heavy once again. Drop from two nuts for stickies by GDK. The Knutson's going to get trapped in as well, and they're going to pop out here. Forsaken's going to try and find some damage. He's going to force Rib out, but Rib's going to sticky jump away. And it's all forward for Lethal Weapon now, but a soldier walks in. He's going to meet White Glow. White Glow's taking rockets. White Glow will go down. Zebesai's still alive. Going to try and equalize. Pain Train comes out. The scouts are rushing in here. A scout's rushing to last right now. Shadowburn's on there. I don't think he'll be able to get it. He's going for it, though. Shadowburn holds strong, and but it looks like Forsaken was... All, everyone falling back let me, meant Forsaken was left on the Spire and he's been forced off it here and I think they should be able to hold with White Glow down. Yeah, Walder's unable to get that back cap, went for the um, I'm gonna hug you to death approach of Scout versus Soldier and Shadowburn manages to survive his own self damage. I guess the gunboat's pretty good. Uh, MSH about to respawn to make it 6 on 6 but uh, there's gonna be a little bit of Soldier trading, trading spam here bottom right. Uh, Zebesai getting healed back up to full health now, but I'm not even... Do you think they know they have an Uber advantage? It's been a sort of a, a strange situation. If they just push when they get it, they're gonna have an opportunity to pick up a few frags here. Especially if they go top left, it's heavily stacked with Russians. But it looks like they're gonna go bottom right and try and rush point. the point. So much time of a point right there. Uh, the White Glow's almost got the Uber, 9 times 10, it will be popped now. I think they're going to clean up all the frags, the heavies on the point, Walters tries to rush it, there's one soldier left up top, if they clean them up, it can be all all people forward right there. Don't know where Two Nuts is, I presume he's safely out? Yeah, all the way safely out at choke. Yeah, that was um, a, a bit of a, a gamble, or like, I don't know, you could have done, you could have pushed top left and still had somebody run on the point, it wasn't like you had to use your Uber just for that, but I know that is like an old Broder strategy. Perhaps. Soldier in! White Glow has to surf away. The Swedes are all coming through choke. So much damage here, just catching the Russians with their pants down. There goes all the combo classes. Scout caught out as well. Zebesai is going to fall, but it's not going to matter there. That was just clumsy, lazy, just sloppy there from the Russians. As they're going to pile into last, a heavy's going to spin. Heavy gets one frag. Too much for him to kill, though. Like... At choke, Forsaken was just looking behind him, reloading a shotgun, and at that exact moment, a soldier just walks out from Haunter right past him, jumps onto White Glow, White Glow <laughs> has to surf away, and then the rest of the Swedes pile through choke, and they're just caught with their pants down, as they tie it back up at 2-2 in this opening map in the Premiership Playoff. I'm checking out the, the Walters POV here as he rolls out to choke, he's gonna find Shadowburn jumping up, it's a direct Shadowburn trade with Walters! And you would love to have a scout advantage here on this middle. Beaverin will avenge his fallen comrade, but as this middle progresses, if Yang Pai and MSH can stay in the game, that's uh, a lot of annoyance here for Daughter to deal with. But they find themselves in a situation to pick up the frags. White Glow is trying to get out of there, and no Seveny will survive. <laughs> oh, and no. it's actually two notes that goes down. Yang Pai goes huge with a 3k. Just turned that one on a dime. What? I, I'm. I have no idea how White Glow survived. Like, I'm pretty sure two people were shooting at him for a good proportion of that mid, and he just kept spinning in circles and danced out to house. As the Swedes don't want to give up this middle point here, Scout's going to come in, but it's actually going to bait Shadowburn into being picked, and White Glow's just going to fall back with either advantage, and we await the push. Yeah, two nuts back in the game. He's opted to stay with the Medigun. He's healing up his team right here. He's quite far forward. If this bomb comes in, 
If a big shadow burn jump finds him, he might be in trouble. GDK's chasing him down. He's doing big damage here. Airpipe onto Kanatsu, who's down to 30, but he's on life support, not even close to getting overcharged. But meanwhile, White goes down. And the back cap. This is all part of the plan, I guess, CX. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just felt the Russians jumped in. They weren't content to just to just take middle with you, but they wanted more. They wanted the frag. And it just left them exposed on the flank. And now we already see a scout on last. He's got the cap point half capped. He will go down. But it looks like the Swedes want to come straight through main. Nope, just going to change their mind. Preserving that uber advantage. Cautious, safe play. The Swedes have failed a lot of last pushes so far. And I think they're just going to wait for... A more controlled push into last. Yeah, I think they definitely had their scoreboard open because just as they were turning the corner onto me and six spawns came in or like everybody was up for the Russians after they had got obliterated previously, they all spawned together. Now it's a heavy weapons guy here from Zebesai. They're going to lead with Rib and they're going to bring Zebo and often you see them recycle but they're bringing the heavy straight into the fight here. They know they have that uber advantage. They're just trying to do as much damage as possible. Scout runs in bottom, right? And yeah, that's going to be a 3-2 there, CX. Yeah, much cleaner. Kanatsun got the pop of GDK's stickies and as soon as that happened, Walters went onto the point and it was just too difficult with a heavy so close to the point for them to all get onto it. And the Swedes take the lead, as I think we see both demo men rolling out house. But I think GDK is actually going to walk out balcony as we see a shit house push from the Russians. Uh, and they're delaying the aggression. Here comes the soldiers now and that soldier's caught out a lot of choke. But uh, Beaver's able to get one frag. The scouts are all over the point. Soldier coming in. Big air shot on that soldier trying to come in. Zebesai's weak under the point. Yangpai's got control of a point. Soldier's going to jump. White Glow. White Glow gets taken down. Nice kind of just about air shot there from Zebesai. GDK will be able to get him in revenge. But surely they can clean this up now. Just an equalizing shadow burn. Oh, MSH is apparently behind on two nuts as well. Yes. And is killing Beaver. And is going to walk to middle. Not walk to middle. Wait, Wait for, for a, a health back. Um, there we go. We're going to walk to middle. No, there's a soldier now. Can MSH get another frag? Demo's walking in from Cho. He got that health kit as well, so that like blows down any sort of uh, aggression here for the Swedes if they wanted to try and contest middle there. We're going to have to wait for another few seconds for that kit to come up. Their medic will be back in the game shortly as well, but uh, again. Two Nuts finds himself at an uber disadvantage. They're going to hold forward here and they might pay the price for that as uh, White Glow's uber becomes closer and closer. Reality might dawn on them soon when they see a lot of uber blue Russian players closing down on them. They're still not getting back 90% right now for White Glow. The Russians are gearing up here for a big push and Two Nuts might just have there goes egg a soldier. In his face. Yeah, they're ubering through choke. Forsaken actually gets dropped. MSH gets dropped. Uh, GDK is found with the Uber, but the back cap is started. Uh, Nutsen manages to pick off Yang Pai. Shadow Burns clean up, cleaned up behind. And what a car crash of a push from the Russians. Yeah, everybody queuing up there to be Ubered and all that damage still coming in to choke. Like, that's so often the way that people will just ignore the Ubered players and keep spamming the choke point. A lot of people going, being put through the meat grinder there on the Russian side. A lethal weapon uh, now find themselves in a de defensive posture. Daughter coming straight through, race upside. Here they come with that charge, they're poised. Uh, Shadowburn just jumps out of me and past the, the red combo. And two nuts, Uber's here, they're gonna wrap around here to try and trap White Glow. Uh, attempt to air shot there from Knutson is uh, replaced by a shotgun frag onto White Glow. Medic goes down, and most of the rest of the Russian team have gone down. Plenty of frags coming in there through that Uber, and uh, a nice turnaround. There's stickies on main though, nobody's going main, they're coming in from lower. I haven't even spotted the stickies, I'm sure somebody's gonna die in that trap, but yes. that means there's no stickies on main. On the point, oh! Oh, they just, they're oh. just throwing the scouts in here, I think they just wanted to see if they could catch the Russians off guard, and they're just gonna back out from an Uber advantage. And now the Russians are in a really difficult position. There's only three minutes left and they're around down, and currently holding last with an Uber disadvantage. They're going to push. Shadowburn goes down to a sticky trap on the front door. Someone did die to a sticky trap on the front door, as you were right. <laughs> <laughs> and are they just going to hold? No, they're going inside. They're not, they're not going to turtle it out that much. They're walking down main, 85%. Walters is going to go down again. And they're just taking a lot of peppering. They're going to uber through here. 80% on White Glow. GDK will go down. No stickies on the point. They're just going to all jump onto the point. White Glow doesn't have uber to defend it. They're just... Taking a, bit, taking a bit of time, but just comfortably getting all the frags, and now it's looking difficult for the Russians. 
Yeah, Zebo smashed that one on, on lower right, came in, got two frags uh, even away from the Uber there. Uh, everybody else able to focus attention on the heavy onto this next middle. It's Grim with only two minutes left, GG's being called. Uh, an SCV at least, there's uh, GDK walking out into a direct sticky from Rib who is just walking forward straight across the point as he loves to. Uh, now drops down to find that there's two Russian players underneath, it's MSH and Shadowburn. Shadowburn loves to delay those jumps, he's coming in late but only finds Nuts and it is fear can actually just about survives. Two Nuts and White Glow have both gone down already in this middle though but it's just turned into a DM fest and what essentially is dead time here. Yeah, uh, the Russians needed like two perfect rounds, you know, complete wipes on mid, straight to last, caps to win that. And this is fine. Oh, what a jump! What a jump from Zebasa. He somehow gets the high ground. MGE Badlands middle here. Zebasa will come out on top. And Zebasa is going to try again, but respawners will clean it up for the Russians. But there's not a lot left for Russians can do. The time's against them. Yeah, looking grim here. Crits Creek for White Glow. He's just gonna give the fans a glimpse of one more Crits Creek before we go to the next map, which will be CP Gully Wash. Uh, the, the Swedes are coming in. They're just going for it, trying to warm up their DM or stay hot for the next game. But the Russians, they know Crits is ready here. They're gonna pop off. How many people can they kill on that Grey Bridge? GDK calls for it. The door shuts. The door shuts just in time to save all the Swedes. There's another back cap once again. The Russians' back door has been left wide open pretty much all of this game. The scouts just getting loads of back caps on middle. And we're going to come into last here. Try and just pull one round back to save face. MSH goes down early. That's not going to help. If you're able to pick Walters back off in return. But with that Uber on last, I'm sure of a drop. They're not going to be able to cap this. They can't even kill the Pyro. Knutson brings in the Uber to clean us up. A uh, couple of frags, and yeah, that's going to be it. Soldier trying to equalize towards the point. Doesn't pull it off. We saw a, a good show in here from Lethal Weapon. In this first map, you know, they were um, put by ETF2L as the, the lower seed. The way they split up these six teams in the qualifiers was there was two high seeds, two mid seeds, and two low seeds. And uh, the Russians showing that they can at least take a few rounds off the Swedes gives me hope. For the next map here at Commander X. Yeah, I don't know. I think Gully Wash is the stronger map for the Swedes, so they're going to be more than happy with this result on Badlands. Um, what do you think the Russians need to change to fix it, to turn those couple of rounds into, you know, five rounds, four rounds, five rounds, and actually take a win? Uh, they actually were playing really well. They were winning a lot of these engagements. There was these, like, back and forths and at, at points... It was like Dota were thinking, oh yeah, we've got this, and then they go in and GDK just like picks up two with stickies and then everyone else just sort of falls apart. I'm surprised that it ended up uh, a 4-2. to two. I think that last round was sort of a, one of those desperation ones mm. due to the clock. It would have been uh, a much closer game. and They were even in the lead at times, so I'd say just keep playing the same way. Maybe try and keep, at, you know, at the, at the start of the game, whenever they were getting ahead, White Glow was staying alive more than two nuts. I know that's sort of like an elementary thing, keep your medic alive, but maybe they can keep him alive uh, a little bit more and maintain that medic advantage, they might find themselves actually winning a map. I'm going to try and bring mm. the stats up. I've already got the logs open. Um, the thing I felt the Russians lacked is their, their flank just seemed kind of vulnerable all the time. They were pretty good going forwards, but Beaver and Walters, Zebesai just exposing the flank quite a lot. Everything looks pretty even on the logs though, damage-wise. Damage-wise, it, it alternates, literally alternates red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, and class for class as well. Demo, pocket, roamer, scout, scout. That was even as it gets. <laughs> That's crazy. I like these beautiful patterns. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's interesting to note that GDK got thir went 37 for 16, whereas Rib went 22 for 14, yet Rib did 800 more damage, you know, 30 more damage a minute. Forget your damage Despite. stats, man. It's all about the, the kills and assists per death. Look at Yang Pai up there hanging with the big dogs. <laughs> he produced Two some uh, good sprees, and then you got MSH sucking out a little bit. Uh, only with a 1.0 KA per death average, mm. uh, not Low having the same sort of success well. rate. The only kind of damage that was, I don't know, like 45 below the second bottom, which is Beaven. I don't know, just maybe seems a little bit out of place at this level, mm. at this premiership playoff. But then notice as well, it's sort of to do with the rules. Like if you look at the heals, 
Uh, you got Yang Pai actually second in heals there on his team. Maybe he was building Ubers and stuff, but definitely playing around the medic has no doubt helped keep his deaths lower. Mm. I know, it was really even, but I think the Swedes just... It's just that flank thing, like too many pushes. Like when the Swedes lost a push or failed a push, it wasn't the end of the round. You know, I think only once or twice they lost a push so badly it was the end of the round. Whereas a couple of times the Russians lost it so badly, there was no recovering, even though they had only just lost mid. Yeah, Nilsson as well, even though I was um, suggesting that two nuts had had a troubling start to the round. Look at the deaths. White Glue died three times more than him as it ended up. But White Glue put out 2k more heals is interesting as well. Hmm, struck my chin here, my bloody chin. <laughs> We're definitely saying a lot of observations. All we need is a conclusion. No, no, not drawing any conclusions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The, I don't think we're hmm. telling us much. I mean, there are certainly a lot of numbers to look at. Undoubtedly, many numbers in play. I am on the STV of Altad back in, and we're waiting for the broadcast to start. I'm hoping that they're going to stay on the same server. That would make things run smoothly. What I might do is uh, ask, maybe I could just, maybe somebody could just open up the other stream and tell me what is the result of the other game that's going on right now. That's uh, Phoenix versus AO Girl. I did ask Stark to give me score updates, and as I can tell from the game, info, the match is still going on. The frags look pretty even as well, and that's your sideshow. And it's just ended. I'm going to PM Stark. The whole thing's over, or just one map? It's just the first map, I believe. Ooh, full 30 I, I minutes for so, those guys, least, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Who, who? Uh, so, Gullywash ends, I think, or I think it was Gullywash. And the final score is 5 4 to Phoenix. 5 4 to Phoenix. Mm, this is a Permzilla at work. He doesn't want to play in Premiership. He's throwing <laughs> the game. I can just. Frozilla. <laughs> Oh, that was actually Badlands. They lost 5-4. I'm going to play Gullywash now. This is uh, uh, neck and neck in terms of both games. Interesting. Yeah, the, only, the only thing that is maybe to point out is uh, Ayo Girl using Horku, who is their main scout for the season, but hasn't actually really played with him yet as he's been... I'm not sure exactly why, but he's not been able to play. So Efug, their backup, has been playing. Okay. And uh, is he... How would you uh, weigh those two up? I don't know, I thought it was going to be pretty comfortable. I mean, obviously we're casting this game because we thought it would be more interesting, closer. I thought Aogel were just going to roll it, really. But clearly, I was massively wrong. Yeah, originally uh, I wanted to cast that because those were the two mid-seeds. I thought I thought it should be closer, but people just wanted to see Dodder and Zebesai was casting doubt on his own team and the Russians were saying <laughs> they were going to take it. So I was like, yeah, let's do this. Crits. I it was think White Glow. He persuaded me with his Crits Machine movie. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's got my best, best frag movie has to be the best team in Europe right now. So, it's just how it works. I'm going to have to run to the toilet because I have the tiniest bladder in the world before the second map all kicks off. No Phil, problem. entertain the viewers however you 